Hey, yeah, in this video um show you how to make gaming assets, specifically mo a mossy stone asset. Two days ago I started uh, with that. These are the first results. Doesn't look pretty good. Um, yeah, for example, this one is too smooth. This one has strange details. This one looks a bit weird, um, but this one starts to look okay. Uh, and then uh, I went on and then I got this one, looks a little bit better. And then my last asset is like that. And uh, for a low poly, it looks quite good. So I will show you in the poly count uh, like that. So I delete this asset and then I go to my asset manager. And let's add that. I have here still a modifier on somewhere. Let's move that. And let's take a look at the high and low poly. So there's the high poly, that's the low poly. I think we can go um, a little bit um, higher poly than this because this is quite very low poly. Mm, and we can go as high as we want. Now, um, someone help me with that. Uh, I've, I've got the name. So it's over here. So my question was, uh, so I had an asset here. This is the poly count, very low poly. Uh, my question was, yeah, should we get better results with that poly count? Um, and then the suggestion was to add more uh, maps, but I use already quite some uh, maps. Or to increase the poly count because sometimes that might be better than uh, using more textures. I did that, it looks a bit better. And then I said, uh, yeah, it seems I have to improve the shader. And then I got that result. So let's try to make something uh, like that, but then even better than this. I hope it will work because I recorded this fear this uh, video um, quite a few times and I got all sorts of problems with the computer. Uh, but let's try it. So I'm going to model uh, a rock. There are lots of ways to model a rock. Um, so I, I'm using Blocker because um, yeah, that's at the moment my favorite add-on because I created that myself. But um, yeah, you look for your own uh, your, your own workflow. So I will speed up the um, video because you you will have your uh, own. All right, I think I'm uh, happy with this one as high poly. So then um, I'm going to remesh it. You can use any kind of remesher. You can use blenders. Build in a remesher, like if you go here, you can use any of those. I think you should avoid chop because you got a lot of artifacts that you need to uh, fix your uh, mesh, I noticed. Uh, or you can go, if you go to the Blender Dons website, just type Blender Dons, and if you go to the second link, or third one, uh, type um, Remesh, then you see uh, the open source auto remesher. Uh, I use the commercial one. The results um, are somewhat uh, similar. You have an older one like the instant meshes remesh, but that gives a little bit sharp edges and a lot of artifacts. Um, this one's pretty good. I use the commercial one. 
So I go to my workspace and there I find quad three much I think. I want to have like fifteen hundred what is it faces? I don't want sharp edges, so um, and then I remesh. That's pretty fast. So this one is then the low, low poly version, and the other one, the hidden one, I think this one, that is the high poly version. Let's uh, save this one, this file. Just in case I got a crash, you see, I made all these uh, assets already. Um, so I will continue like that and make a folder first. So I put all my files into there. And there um, I named the same real asset, and this is number 23, I believe. 23, and I save that. Um, now I'll, I will hide the high poly. We see the low poly here. Let's double check. That looks pretty nice. Exactly what I wanted. Now I'm going to UV unwrap this. I do the lazy way. I do smart UV project. Then um, I'm going to pack the islands a bit more efficient because here is space that is not uh, used. So if we pack better, we you know, our texture looks uh, better. And for that I use the UV Pack Master. Um, I have the paid one, but I think everything I do here you can also do with the free version. So I, I enable heuristic so it keeps on calculating until I press escape. Then packing devices, I use only my GPU because my CPU is a bit slow and then I press pack. So, and I see here 0 0.689, that's pretty good. That's not too bad. Uh, and then I click validate UVs. No invalid face found. Uh, in case you see an error over here, you might want to press a 1 and then um, the infinite faces are highlighted and then you press for example this one and then you move that out of the overlapping area like that. But this one is good. So now we have that done. I delete this shader and that one and I add a principle. BSDF. I plug that in and give it at least a color for now. Now um, I add a texture, image texture, and I add new. I call it uh, normal, normal map. And if I click with my mouse and I drag down, I got two of these. Uh, I can add it at the same time. I want to have it uh, 2K, I believe this is, and then I press OK. So we had that done. We had um, high poly, we have the low poly, we unwrapped the low poly, and we created a texture here, and I select this texture. Now, um, I select the high poly and then I select the low poly. Then we switch over to cycles because there we can bake and not we cannot bake an EV. Uh, so we scroll down, we see bake here, and then click on normal. I want to use 2px, I think that's okay, and we choose for selected to active, selected to active. So the low poly is uh, active, you can see that here we have, there's the low poly model and that one has that material. Let me double check, so 
I select nothing. I select the high poly. I press a shift and I click again and then I have the low poly. The low poly has to select it last, so that's the active. It just has selected to active. So it's high to low. And then I hope, oh, I forgot something. We have to select the active. If you click on here, you have to fill in the extrusion. And I want to do one thing more, and that is select the low poly and add a modifier shrink wrap and put in the high poly. So you will see a slight distance. If you look uh, over here, I will turn the modifier on and off. It's just a slight difference. But so the high poly, shift, click, and I got the low poly. Back to the run tab to bake. And I think we can now bake. So we have this texture select. That's important. And then we press bake. And let's check um, how that uh, looks like. So let's uh, check. Mm, let's rename this normal uh, asset uh, 23. And I open the image editor. Image editor. Normal asset 23. Oh, that looks almost good. Except uh, problems here. Um, let me check if we can get away with that. I hope so. Otherwise, we have to adjust some settings texture. So we go to vector, uh, normal map, like this, and over here, color, and that is normal. And um, we save the texture, save. We see we are already in the directory because I saved the blend file, and then I just have to click that one. Um, then I'm going to hide that one. Ah, oh, that's sad. Because, oh, right. We've got something. We have to put this on one color. Oh, I think I'm going to live with this error. A small error over here. Those are things here and here. Let's see if we can find it. All right. Well, that's just a small thing. I think I'm not going to bother about that. And here's the other one. But um, yeah, if you want to fix it, you can play with the extrusion. And that will most likely fix it. But this is uh, great. Oh, let's double check. I think I like I like the shape, etc. Looks pretty rocky to me, I think. Now, um, let's save this. Save the results. Now, um, I'm going to bake some masks. Because we have quite a lot of things to do. So I will move that a little bit out of the way. I will hide it for now. Yeah, I'm going to bake mask with the material notes on, but there are loads of add-ons here where I can bake uh, masks. Uh, doesn't matter much. Uh, the reason why I bake a mask is that I capture some data about the geometry. If I just use a shader, uh, uh, for example, use any shader, I have the shader over here. If you use any shader, um, uh, then you see shader compilation. You see, you see maybe a nice texture, but 
there's nothing related to the geometry. So that's uh, quite important if you want to have um, yeah, some good results. So um, for that reason, I, I bake some textures. And someone asked me, um, uh, why do you have to bake uh, textures? And that's uh, because, um, yeah, if you use your um, asset in a game engine, you can, um, th that game engine doesn't understand the um, procedural um, texture. We can make in Blender. Uh, and um, bl and cycles, um, and cycles you can make like uh, the uh, bevel or the um, pointiness or something, something like uh, such kind of textures. And uh, an Eevee not so. If you want to use procedural materials in Eevee, then you need to bake. Um, your uh, masks and cycles, and then use that in Eevee. Uh, all right, so I have the shader here. Uh, this this node is uh, just for baking your masks. Uh, your add-on you are using might work differently, but I show you um, yeah how to work with the material nodes add-on is included in the Eevee Express. So um, you see here uh, three steps. You see preview and cycles, UV unwrap and big textures. So preview and cycles adjust uh, the radius like that. So what I want is I want uh, I want to have some information about the geometry, and then we mix later two shaders with, with that information. So. You see here, uh, it's uh, like a bevel, but I put noise on top. Uh, you can scale your noise pretty high, but that has not much uh, use because you don't see much of it at a bigger distance. And if you scale it too low, um, uh, same problem, then you got an effect which has not much use. So what I want is something that is looks a bit like stone and visible from a normal distance like that. So I think I go for this, something like this. And I can play with the brightness. I think something like that. So we are in cycles. That's all right. That's a, um, I use that as a checklist. Preview in cycles. We did already the UV unwrapping. We have that. And we can now bake uh, the texture. Let me save this just in case something happens. And then I bake the texture. All right, we got an error. Um, doesn't use much, but that is. Because we baked a while ago, and we use selected to active normally, by default that is not selected. If we are going to bake now, oops, uh, bake texture, and then we don't get an error. So normally this doesn't uh, happen, but we were baking from high poly to low poly. So I'll show you later one more um, one more example, and then I will fast forward again. Baking takes a little, little bit longer than usual, I think, because I'm recording also. I think she'll be there in five seconds. I hear my CPU. All right. Yeah, this is an important step. So. Um, I'm going to rename this, and that is um, um, Bevel Asset 23. I have my um, image editor over here. And then I save my image, click on Save. 
And you see we are already in the correct directory. I just have to click save, that's it. And then I move that um, texture over here. I know later on we want to uh, manipulate uh, the information what's in this texture. Uh, I do that with um, a color ramp. I always put a color ramp behind the texture so I can control how much, um, for example, how much moss I want, or how much of the white part. And we will see that later. So I do uh, one more and then I fast forward it. So I'm going to do the Z. So I add the shader, add the shader. I plug this in, plug this in here in output. And then I preview in cycles. Mm, I think that's probably okay. You can play with the position like that. So I use this. Um, you have stone is on soil. Maybe the bottom part looks a bit, there's some sand around it. So I make this more uh, brownies like that. I think maybe something like that. Something like this. And then again, the noise I want. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. This looks nice. And then I'm going. So we are in cycles, right? We are in cycles. We UV unwrapped it before. Now we can uh, bake it. This time we don't see how that was just one time. All right, as well, already there. Uh, so this is the Z, I will rename it again. So I always can find it uh, back and I, this is a unique uh, name. There's only one object and uh, that's as 23 in this directory. So, and then I save this texture, save it. And I save my blend file as well. So I will bake a few more. I will fast forward the video later. But, um, <laughs> um, all right. So, you know. All right, yeah, so now uh, I have this one, this bit different. So this is an, a vertex group. So I go in, I press Control uh, tap, and then I use weight paint. Then I want to have my uh, tissue add-on because the tissue add-on has something interesting. So I will enable that uh, here. In my workspace, so I got the tissue add on. And if you are in weight paint, you see this, um, you, you see a few uh, options to create, um, what do you call it? A uh, weight, weight, uh, vertex groups. Do I say that correct? So it's vertex groups, yeah, vertex scores, and then you can convert them to. Um, vertex groups, I think. Uh, let me check. So um, you click on curvature, and then you see curvature appears here on a vertex group. 
and you can convert that to color over here. Um, convert the colors, and then you see that here, you know, uh, convert, convert the colors. So this was the, so if I plug that in, plug that here in, and I think oh, it's preview and cycles, and then you can play with these settings over here. And that's pretty nice. You can play around with the other um, options as well. Let me go uh, switch back to object mode. I like that. I like that. Very nice fact. Um, so, and then I'm going to bake it. So we are in cycles. Let me double check. We are in cycles. And we had the UV unwrapping. We did that. So we can bake it. Make that one. So we have quite, uh, we have, um, I think, six uh, maps. So we can do all kinds of uh, things with mixing uh, shaders. So we are almost done with baking. Well, it's quite a lot of work to make an asset. But it's very nice. Um, now we have that done. Now comes the interesting part, almost. <laughs> so I give it a bit of a material to look at. So I prepare a little bit. So. Uh, um, I know that I want to use something like moss, a moss shader. Well, basically this is uh, just a mixture of musgrave and a uh, wave. Uh, uh, yeah, you can take a look at the node group, how that looks like. M not, not very special, it's just for the musgrave, uh, wave texture, and then you m mix that. Somehow, and <laughs> you put that in one node group, but I think, yeah, it's not too hard to make um, something like this. Um, so I want that, and I want something like stone. If you have the material notes done, you can use a stucco to make a stone. Let me fix this a little bit. We don't need this anymore. And we have that. Let me move that out of the way a bit. A little bit up. Ah. This one a bit there. It's a bit crowded. <clears throat> I'm too impatient. So next, so I have two shaders here. And um I'm going to use this um, this mask, this mask uh, to mix these two shaders. Uh, normally, I can do things like that. So I go to my shader and I have a mix shader, and I plug that in like that, and then so, and then um, plug this into the mix factor. And then put this in the output, then I have that. But the problem is, most baking, baking uh, add-ons, they want to have uh, the principal uh, shader as last one. So they check the principal shader and they check uh, what inputs are there. And they calculate it that way. Um, all right. Uh, I will show you the way I do it because yeah, that's most compatible with most other uh, add-ons. Uh, you won't get that much issues. It's a bit more work, but all right. So I go to car mix, and I copy that three times because for gaming assets you need basically 
uh, the, the color or the diffuse and you need a roughness a normal map and uh, if you have metallic then also metallic but we don't have metallic here so we mix uh, these two shaders and we are going to use the color from that one and color from that one and we plug that here into that one but I'll disconnect here I'll disconnect because now I can prepare this whole uh, shader and I don't see all the time shader compilation. If I have disconnected and I do something here, I will see all the time shader compilation, I have to wait all the time. So I disconnect uh, the output, I can play around mm, that much. Let me make a little bit more space here. Oops. So I have the color, I'm going to mix the roughness now, roughness, um, plug the roughness into this one, and you just can mix normal maps, but you have to keep in mind this is the, um, a normal uh, map output, well maybe I show you that later if applicable. Oh, and we have here that high poly, high poly normal map. Uh, we want to have that included as well. For that I use converter and then I go to vector map and add. I just add it. That's okay because I can play with strength over here and I can play with the strength over there. Now there's one more thing make it more complex is that this shader um, I will show you that later otherwise it's too hard to explain um, alright so then I got this mask and this mask has to I have to plug that over, over here so that, that is the mix factor between those two shaders. So I'll use, put that in the factor over there. So basically I'm just mixing two shaders based on this map you see over here. So one is the, the, the moss and one is the stone. Um, yeah, uh, you can you choose non-color, put everything in non-color if you want. I think it doesn't matter much because um, we are adjusting uh, our data on the eye. We are not using scientific uh, data like that. It's more artistic. Um, so, let's check. Let's uh, connect this and see what happens. All right, yeah, quite some things to do, but it is working. So we have our, um, uh, our stone shader and uh, the moss, and we have to put way more variation and adjust uh, things. So let me, so you can see, you can adjust the moss like that. I think I want to have my moss like that. You can. Make uh, it uh, sharper like that, uh, very sharp, I don't like that. But you can also put this up, this value up, and then your stone has a little bit moss all over the stone. Or like that. Uh, for now, maybe I'll just put a little bit like that. I think. Now, the next thing I want to make it lo look more like a stone so I turn this down uh, yeah let me go to ah there we have it all right oh yeah well the stones 
Um, uh, I was checking some stones, and I want to have something. Uh, you see, big lines. Something these lines over here. Um, it looks like compartments, and then those compartments are divided into smaller ones. Um, I hope I can get that. By the way, you see moss um, grows uh, different ways. Here you see it's growing on top, on top. Uh, here you see it's growing on top, but not so much in um, curvature like that. But here it's not growing on top, and it's growing on the sides, maybe. I don't know, maybe people are walking on, are walking on stones. What I want to say is, yeah, moss can grow. So let's, uh, I'd want to make those compartments if possible. So this is pretty big. Move it a bit down like that, I think. This approximately the size I want to go for. But it looks a bit ugly. Like, yeah. Let's see if we can improve that. No, not like that. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe something like that. But we have to blur these uh, lines a little bit. So there's one thing you see that I have here. This contrast, but it doesn't make a bump. Only, only these uh, compartments are making a bump. And that is, you see the normal is going out here, it's going in here. But I want to add um, also, these little uh, grains uh, as bump up. So I add here a factor. I go to bump, and bump. I just plug in the color, put in the height, and then, ah yeah, yeah, now I see it. So I get this uh, normal map over here. I put that in here, put it in there, and plug that in here. All right, uh, so we get that. We can now control uh, that dirt over here, that dirt over there, but we can also control the um, strength over here. That's what we want. I have to double check if this uh, will work in cycles as well, because last time I've seen something strange in cycles, and it works fine. Last time I've seen something uh, that is um, like giving a light for, with for a lot of noise and then I did something wrong with the normal map. Alright, so now the stone, this is very glossy. I want to put it way um, rougher like that. Um, all right, I think I'll fast forward because this is a bit boring. This is just an um, adjustment of all these settings to make the stone look better. But once I'm going to mix those maps, I will be back. All right, yeah, I think the basics uh, are done. I said there's a lot of work. So um, I think I don't need this anymore. So and I'll make this a bit small. So now I can go on with the, playing with the masks. I think we don't need that one. 
So the first thing I want to do is to add um, yeah, some sand. Not really sand, but uh, just that it is a bit uh, darker over here. So I think I grab this over here. Move this out of the way. And I add um, mix RGB. Uh, let me try multiply. Put this into the factor. And as usual, I want to have a color ramp like that. Color ramp and oh, hold on. <laughs> so I'm going to use um, this one. Sorry. Mm, how do I do that? All right. So what I want to do now is make some sand over here. So I move this, uh, this uh, masks, mask is for the, the sand level. And I want to add some sand, uh, well, the color of uh, sand, uh, I want to mix it uh, here so it looks a bit darker. Uh, I think I'm going to use mix RGB and do something very strange. I mix, mix it with its own color, but I, I'm going to do something with the se second color later. So nothing happens now if I do that. Looks all the same because I plugged in the same thing. But the thing is, I want to have something in there. And I'm going to multiply with uh, a brownish color. And I want to use that one. All right. So I think we can now mix it perfectly. So I can decide exactly where I want to have that uh, slightly different color. All right, I'm happy with that. Maybe we can make this node group, node, main group, and put the fact over there, color over there. Um, and I go to group over here, click that one. No, I go to no, I call it um, no, T -ply mix or something like that. So I'll take a short break. I will be right back. All right, I'm back. I had a little break. Uh, so I said I want to use this multiple times. <sighs> it's going to be too difficult. All right, so, so um, let's add a frame here. I don't use a big wrangler because I'm not doing this uh, daily. Uh, so I add a frame. With big wrangler, you can select some notes and add it to the frame, something like that. So I got some, and then I got frame here. I go to the node, I think, select uh, the frame, and then I will add this is sand, sand, and make that level size a bit bigger, uh, move this up, move that there. Uh, I want to add uh, one more. And then again, I will fast forward and because uh, we have quite some mass, but generally it's all the same. If you want to go fancy, uh, you can instead just mixing colors, you can mix the 
sand with another shader, but that's a little bit too far for me. Uh, I just go with um, changing the color from here. Right, I move a little bit more that out of the way. Let me see if I can make that smaller like that. All right, now I'm going to mix one of these. Uh, let me open the image editor and see which one is most interesting. That one was the pointiness. This one, I didn't give a name. Um, this the ambient occlusion, that one is dust. Yeah, I definitely want to add uh, dust. That's very nice also. So I add some dust and bring that. Just mix, I think. Mix. Um, I'm going to use this fuck. Flick this in over here. Ah, yeah, I know. So I use that one. And plug this into the diff. And now I can play with the values like that. That's also interesting. So um, I want to make it a bit lighter. And I want to, then I want to multiply it with yellow. Yellow, like that. Yeah, that's the fact I want. I think something uh, like this. So I can put this also in the frame. So I'll make a new frame. There are several ways to mix. Here we used um, the multiply and then just mix. Here I had another setup to mix and the colors. Okay, I will um, use some other masks and then well, well and then a fast forward because it's approximately all the same. So I want to adjust the uh, settings, all right?
so I got all the maps I wanted. So we can now adjust all the things. I have the mouse over here, like that. Let me see if I can improve the mouse a little bit. We can scale this up. Oh yeah, now um, I'm going to unhide a plane. I had a plane somewhere. And I'll change the material so I, don't, I have a reference of a um, good material. Now I see that my stone is a bit, a little bit yellowish, mm, quite light, because you see here we have some uh, stone. I think I can play around with that. I just add something to correct at the end of the chain. So I can play with the value. The value is more like um, an ex exposure. I got the wrong object. So I go to the end of the chain. That's right here. There are other things like uh, contrast and brightness, but um, yeah, you mess up with uh, those values. Uh, very safe to use as a value. It's more like uh, works like an exposure thing. I think that must be pretty okay. Oh, we are not finished yet. We have to save it. Then we have this asset. And then we are going to bake it. Bake all the texture so it's ready for a game. Hmm, I delete that one. I make some space over here. So if you want to bake, you can, for example, add a texture here, add an image te texture, uh, click on it, and then you go to uh, Cycles, you go to Cycles, and then you go to Bake, and then you bake separately the, um, the fuse, and then you want only have the color, like that, and you bake that with... Uh, Two pixels margin in my case. And you make also the roughness and you make uh, the normal, finally normal. And, not, and uh, not anymore select to active. You want to bake only the no the, the numbers of the texture of this object. Um, so But uh, I'm going to use an add-on, and that's called Grungit. Grungit works well for me at the moment. I try a lot of uh, add-ons, and sometimes they work, sometimes not. Um, that depends also maybe on the Blender development. So I got a little bit uh, tired, but... Um, I was happy with uh, Grunge it because so far it always worked. So instead of baking three times, I just have to press uh, one. Uh, let me double check. So I want uh, 2K resolution, margin of two pixels, and I need a base color, uh, roughness, and normal. So to be sure, I was safe in this. And, uh, I will rename all objects and I will call it yeah BL uh sorry asset twenty three so and I copy copy this um, text and I go to the mesh 
and I paste it there. So the object and the mesh and the material, I will give it all the same name. So it's all related to this asset. Mm, we have some visitors here at the moment. Oh, I'm not sure if you hear that. Mm. All right, so ready to be. One more time, I save it. And I think I can bake now. No, not yet. I've got something. So I will clean up. I'll clean up everything I don't need. And I will pack. Not yet. So I'm ready to bake now. Wow. And work. You see, I just have three textures here instead of all this things. And again, I'm going to save it. And there is one more thing I want to do. Uh, looks like I missed some details. No, it's all right. Just a tiny bit of details, I think. Uh, now I'm going to my assets. Um, plus zero, and I want to have my EV Express here, my favorite add-on, um, because in EV Express I have everything related to camera, um, but almost everything. <laughs> I still want to add dimensions, so I'm going to make a thumbnail. Thumbnail. I'll uh, remove that one. I'm going to save it as an asset. I'm not sure if I'm happy enough with the results. It looks a bit smooth, too smooth. Uh, maybe I can bump up the normals later on. But so far, uh, now I'm going to view viewport render image. So I got a thumbnail. And now I want to go to external data pack resources. If you are working with asset management, I need to pack resources. Otherwise, I won't pick up the texture. So I got that, so I got uh, the names, everything right. I got um, my um, blend file saved and I packed the resources. So finally I can add this to my asset manager and I use the thumbnail that is rendered. That was here on the view as I confirm. Well, last step. We, um, Let's check if the asset works in our environment, how it looks like compared to the other assets I made. Mm. It looks a bit too smooth for me. Let me check if I can. I can bump up this. Oh yeah, it looks a bit better. Yeah, that's better. Almost. Um, yeah, I can remove a bit spectacular. I'm a little bit cheating. Maybe that's too much. Something like that. Save. Alright, turn off the wireframe. Oh, all right, we go to the asset manager. Then, Yeah, looks not that bad uh, to me. I like 
check uh, the details over here. And these uh, sharp edges a little bit. All right, yeah, we can run on this one. And then um, that's it. Thanks for watching and see you at